Hi and welcome back to the channel. Now today we are looking at a bit of a bigger base. Now in the comments someone asked me to do a dual trio sort of base and this is what I managed to come up with. I am using the separation of loot. I'm not using a bunker, I use a stability access. It's not a bunker. Um, a lot of people keep referring to these as bunkers or not as the title says and suggests. These use an access through stability, one that we used to use years ago for traps. It just stops people from taking doors out and nothing else. Now, there's different ways of building this base. The resource cost will change, the upkeep will change, but I will show you exactly what it costs now for like for like. I will also show in the build, if you armor the loot rooms up fully, how much it will actually cost. Now, there's quite a lot of difference. I've tried to keep it to two walls minimum throughout everything. If you follow the channel, you'll know I'm a big believer of servers usually die quite quick. So I try to make it as minimal as possible, but make sure you can expand off of it. Now, as you come in, I've got some drop boxes on either side to duplicate each other, but I will show you them anyway. Shotgun trap, just to slow people down. It's not super effective, but up here, I have to take the garage door down first, thinking they can maybe do something. They're stuck with another shotgun trap. As you can see, more loot boxes in there. Now, this is all armoured to floor. This is just to slow people down. It's separated as well through half walls, so they have to break the half walls as well. Splash can't go across all of it. Now, as you can see, the roof piece stops people from just taking the doors. They have to take the roof piece out. With all my bases, I try to make it so people have to spend a lot to actually raid them. As I always say, in every single video that I do, you're always going to get raided. There's always going to be someone who has got more resources than you and can take your base out. But what we try to do is make sure people have to spend as much as possible to do that. Now, by using separation of loot, something that I'm using quite a lot at the minute, it means you have to work through every single room. Now, with bunkers, the big bugbear I have, people just plow straight down through the top as soon as they get to the bunker, because a lot of people tend to put everything in the bunker, they find that they get lose everything straight away. Now, with this base, the only downfall is you have to have your TC in one of the loot rooms, but that gives it a 25% chance of getting it if they go for one loot room. Because there's four main, you can move these around, separate them. I recommend you do, because if someone else sees this video, they're probably going to go for the room that I've put the TC in. Now, in bases like this, if they've got the TC, all they can really do is grief it and put doors back on it. But if they're going to raid it fully, you're going to lose the base anyway. So TCs aren't as important as some other bases. Now bunkers, obviously, because you can put the twig down, etc. and lock it back up fully. It comes into play a lot more for that. Now, as I said, you can upgrade this. You can expand it if you want. If you are going to expand it, I would not put the roof pieces into up there. I would probably honeycomb out from that also the half walls at the top do not put them all these bases are for ideas and suggestions for you to grow your own base from so let me quickly jump into this and i'll show you how it's built now this is relatively quite easy to build as i said if you dm me in discord the link is below i can send you the footprint so you can have it on a second screen i know a lot of people like that you can actually have a sort of starter base with this bear in mind this is an ambitious solo or duo more likely to be a trio. Every build I do is more focused towards the vanilla servers. If you are doing this as your starter base, bear in mind you're going to have to have your double doors at the front. So if you want, have a, a stone wall if you wish and just break it out later on. But for this, you're going to have to build fast to make sure it's secure. If you're a duo or trio, just make sure that you're covering each other when you're doing it because it could be quite easy to get cupped in this. Now I'm going to metal this up and just show the metal in piece as you go along. From here I am going to just build the entire footprint out. As I said, DM me in Discord if you would like to have the entire footprint to work off of. Now building out is relatively easy for this base. As I said, separation of loot for me is a big one. I personally think the bunker will get patched at some point. I'm not sure when or how, but I want to steer away from it. 
I still think bunkers are extremely strong, but if you're like me, I just don't like using bunkers. They're quite boring to build. I like to try different things, but it's not to say they aren't good. And trust me, they are extremely strong. But as I said before, people are tending to just smash straight through. Now, I'll metal up all the sections that I suggest you should metal up. Obviously, you won't have the resources straight away. You're going to have to wait until you have them. But with this base, you can do everything you need to from the inside at later stages. Now, the central triangle, you can leave it stone because if people are rocking through, when you get to that, it's not really going to do that much anyway. You want to try and save as much metal as possible and just use stone as little as well by equally spreading it out. Now, once this section is done, I'll just quickly honeycomb this section. This section for the honeycomb, the outer exterior, I'm going to leave in stone. If you have the metal to do it and you're happy to, for the upkeep for it, by all means do it. It's just going to add protection. As I said, I will put what it costs in armor and upkeep later. I'll show you how it's done and what, how much it's going to cost. But I'm trying to be realistic. I don't like to have a lot of armored sections because you want to be using HQM to make weapons, etc. and armor. You don't want to be using it for all your upkeep. So I try to keep it sensible in that sense. Now, we'll come back to door frames later. They're not extremely important. Now, this is a very important section. You have to have two half walls. This will allow you to put your twig section in to put your roof piece. As you can see here, it allows you to put the floor in. Very important. Make sure you do never, ever upgrade the twig floor piece when you do it. Because if you come back, you're going to end up with a nice roof blocking you and any raiders from your base. Now, just so you know where I put the furnaces the first time, I'm going to stick them here. You can put them in the loot room as well. If you're in a duo or trio, you're most likely going to have a little furnace base anyway for your large furnace to the side of the base. That is something that I'm going to work on and I have been working on as a large furnace base. They've kind of went under the radar for a while with a lot of people. So it's something I have been playing with, but I want it to look different and be different from all the ones that are out there at the minute. Now you can upgrade the floor of this to metal if you wish. I'm not going to do it because I want to try and keep the equal cost across all resources just to give you a rough idea of what that keeps going to be at different stages and different blends of what you're doing. Now, you don't have to do those walls either really because you have to go through the roof piece, then the wall, then through another wall. So again, it's just saving resource. Now this back section wants to all be in metal. Now, the reason for that is because if they just take that out, they're going to get straight into the base. So you want to make sure they have to spend quite a lot to get through those walls. Now, as I said, if you wish you can armor, it's up to you. But I personally don't see the point. They still have to go through a lot of doors. If you have armor double doors as well, it completely changes the situation for anyone trying to get through doors downstairs. If you do the armored doors, I'd probably only make the main door here as armored before you jump up. And probably the loot rooms as well. Again, you want to keep the cost of HQM down. It's very, very important. Now, the floor pieces, I will show you what I would suggest you put in armoured. Now, again, you want to keep the armoured to a very, very minimum. Simply because, as I said before, you don't want to be spending all that in upkeep. A lot of bases you see, they go quite high on armour costs. If you're willing to farm that and you're close to like a recycler, then fair enough, by all means. For me personally, I want to actually play the game. I don't want to actually farm literally every time I'm on playing Rust. It gets very boring and you soon lose interest because you're constantly having to farm. If you're a busy server, you know how hard it is to farm with clans running about. You've got about 20 10 year olds. I think it's the funniest thing in the world just to kill solo and duo players and just sit and annoy them. It's not the best. So bear that in mind. When you're building any base, now separation of these sections, I'm going to put them in stone, as I said, just to keep it equal. Probably do it metal. This just means if someone does rocket down, they're going to have to take more rockets to get through, to spend more to actually get into every section. Now, again, it's up to you how you do this section. I'm going to do this bit of metal, mainly because the shotgun trap was there. 
you may change your mind. Just bear in mind, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to put the floor piece in first and build your way through. Now, the way I've done this base in the tutorial, I wouldn't recommend because you're going to have to make sure that you can build it up in sections. The main thing is to get all your doors in first, then probably do this section of the roof. Um, it's probably the smarter way to do it, but for the purpose of this, because it's easier to show in this method, that's why I'm doing it. Now, she made the roofs, you don't have to have these. I just like to have drop boxes right at the front, so if something is happening, I can just quickly grab something, run out, and start doing what I need to do. Again, you could put these as squares and have bigger sections in there, maybe have beds in that section, so you can get out even quicker. Again, it's how your playstyle acts. As I said earlier, all these bases are just to give you ideas. You don't want to do the base exactly as I've done it. You want to change it up and alter it to suit how you play. Now, I've already had one person send me a video of the strong box. They altered it quite a bit internally and actually made it a hell of a lot stronger than what I had it just by using the ideas that we've shown. Now, by all means, in Discord, you can send me videos of what you've done to improve these bases or change it up. I'll always get feedback and check if I've got time. You have to just bear with me because sometimes it can take me a little while to get back to you, obviously, because I actually work as well. Now, up here, you can have garage doors or you can have double doors. It's whatever you can afford at this stage. I would recommend garage doors as much as possible just because if they do raid through it, it costs them a lot more. Now, the reason why I've done the armoured for the back section is just to slow it down because if there's a roof piece there and they know it, they're obviously going to take the back wall rather than take the roof piece. It's just, it's common sense. I know a lot of people in Rust don't tend to have the common sense, but for the experienced players, if they see it, and I know if I seen it, I'll just take the back wall out and just dismiss the roof piece altogether. So that's the only reason why it's actually there. Now, as you can see, that is the base pretty much done. Now, to get the section up here where you have the triangle floor piece, I'll show you to do that. All you have to do is put your twig in place. Remember, I'm using B grade, so it's going to be in stone. Do not make the mistake of upgrading it when you're using stone. Put your piece in, then place the triangle, upgrade it to metal. And because it's rust and everything works as it should do, when you take it away, the triangle actually just stays there, just hovers in place. Bear in mind, if one of the walls get taken out behind there, the one of the armoured walls, that will actually drop that triangle. So just bear that in mind. Now inside, just wall frame it out, use doors, use double doors, use garage doors, whatever you've actually got. And again, work out where you want to put your TC, which room. If you want to have all loot rooms, fair enough. If you want to have it, just two loot rooms and have two sections for other things, do what you want to do, don't copy this like for like, as I keep saying, it has to be your base. This is just an idea and a template for what you can do. Now, what I'll do is I'll upgrade all the loot room walls to armoured, just to give you an idea how much it'll cost, if that's what you're thinking whilst watching this build, thinking, yep, I'll just make every single one armoured. Now, I'll tell you now, it costs 73 high quality. To have every room armoured. Now, if that's not including the armoured doors, if you did have them, it'd probably raise it to about 85. Now, as a trio, that is not a lot. That's quite a lot to get into every single loot room. Just as much as it would cost to get into a bunker. To be honest, probably more than to get into a bunker because you've separated every single section. That's the beauty of separation of loot. They have to go through each piece. So, guys, that is it. Base, very, very simple, not hard in the slightest. Now, as I said, if you want the full picture of the footprint, join Discord, send me a DM, and I'll send it over to you straight away.